when you make money the goal, you become fucking vulnerable mentally. You become vulnerable fucking mentally. They put fucking things on a pedestal. They, their insecurities of their status is driving them. And that's what the, and plenty of people can be successful through deep insecurity, but they're not happy fucking people. Let there be no fucking confusion on this Tea with Gary Vee. I'm not talking about successful entrepreneurship. I'm talking successful life, happiness. Absolutely, yep, I agree happiness. with you. I think the market is, is ripe for a place like this to, when I think about all the people moving to Miami or Puerto Rico or, yeah, I think, um, you know, the remote worker, the virtual worker, the, I, there's just so many inherent advantages that Dubai has to really make a play. Do you think the best play uh, could be in the, um, the DAO space or DeFi or NFT or? My, my intuition is that NFT is, the most lucrative space because I think similar to social media and consumer internet, it's inherently all encompassing. You know, I think you're gonna, I think you'll see the biggest movement in how consumers, everybody interacts with it. I think the NFT space is incredibly lucrative. But don't you think there's a barrier for entry mm -hmm. that the tech is hard? Of course, but the tech is hard in everything. I mean, understanding how to be part of a DAO, it has, you know, it's just all new. I mean, I think for me, I got lucky. My career started when people didn't know how to use email. And so I've seen things go from this is hard to this is easy. I, I bring up to a lot of friends, I'm like, look, this is all hard now, custodial, non-custodial, all this stuff. I'm like, you used to have to be a programmer to get on the internet. And then Mark Andreessen created a browser and the world changed and I think in the next five years, all of this will be incredibly happening on the back end. Right now, it's just so new. And so, yeah, I think there's a barrier of entry, but if you look at how many people have been willing to fight through that barrier to be a part of this space in such a short period of time, um, I think we'll see a lot more, uh, a lot more adoption very quickly. Yeah. If you're in a position where your parents aren't completely stopping you from doing things on the side and saying, no, you can't, you, you, you're forbidden, you must only study. If you're lucky enough that you can do both, I would tell you that you have plenty of time in front of you yeah. to do what you want. But I do think the sooner you can start tasting, you know, drop shipping, uh, influencer marketing, NFT, cryptocurrency, all this stuff looks easy on paper. It's good in theory, but then when you do it, it's much harder than people think. And I think the sooner you can taste the ups and the downs, it's kind of like exercising. You'll be more prepared for when you do it full time. It's like prepping for a fight. You'll be ready yeah. for the fight. So I think, you know, are you, are you in a position where you can start doing some of this stuff on the side? Um, I think I can. What I, what I spoke to my dad about was doing this in summer um and uh, and one of my and my dad had a, a meeting with the with the, an american businessman uh and he um he's based in arizona and he has a lot of friends in real estate and and everything and he came to to our house a, a, a week ago and i have um plans to go and visit him in arizona and and expand my knowledge about because i'm really interested in real estate as well doing real estate in the future so so i basically planned my whole summer to do that and um and what what my, my my dad tells me a lot is that he feels that i'm lazy and i don't disagree with him uh i can be i have the tendency to be lazy but you're, you're, i also you're, you're, you're lazy because you're disinterested exactly exactly 100 when, when, when i was 13 to 18 i was told by many, many people that I was lazy. They just happened to be people that were at school, you know, and, yeah. and my, maybe my grandma sometimes around the house because I didn't want to hang a picture. But, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, it makes me laugh so much because people thought I was lazy, yet my life's destiny was to be synonymous with work ethic. Yeah, like I, I really feel like if I had something interesting, like when I watch all those videos about 
business and marketing and real estate i expand like three like hours like just just watching and just listening and it's so interesting and i'm so captivated in the moment but as soon as i switch back to my chemistry class and they start talking about all this other stuff like in two minutes i'm like so disinterested so uninterested in whatever they're talking about i lived your life my friend i understand i i it got so bad for me that i started bringing wine magazines to school and i would read them in the middle of class like literally wow. just i i basically realized something i realized that my high school was more interested in me passing because they were going for a blue ribbon status in new jersey which okay. required everybody graduating i realized that i could as long as i showed up for school that i was going to pass and the second i realized that i basically read wine magazines in class or fooled around or daydreamed or doodled yeah. or whatever you know i i think the key here is perspective one you're gonna have you're not missing out today it's nfts tomorrow it's vr the next day it's something that not the three of us could even imagine so i think yeah. you got to make sure that you don't have anxiety of missing out once you have a good yeah. relationship with that what you need to do is just focus on learning as much as you can around the things that you're passionate about. Uh, you know, ultimately, your parents will be okay no matter what, as long as you're healthy and happy. But you might have to have a little bit of pain in between now and that success. If you love skiing, hey. If you love tea, hey. If you love the Yankees, you have to start making content around that and then you can lay your business on top of it. You love the Yankees? Like everybody who's home right now fucking stuck. Start a podcast, a YouTube show, and an Instagram around your favorite thing. Make videos about, if you love an NFL team, you're set. There's free agency, there's things to talk about. Become your local sportscaster. Take your hot takes, post. And then after a year of that, maybe you get to a place where somebody wants to sponsor your Yankees podcast, the Yankee shop for 2,500 a month. And you start building, you start building. It's about building a business around something that makes you happy, not the business that you think is going to make you the most money. Do you know why everybody's into Agreed. cryptocurrency and cannabis and social media and real estate and, and, and wall money. street selling <laughs> money, money. Yep. And, and when you make money, the goal, you become fucking vulnerable mentally. You become vulnerable fucking mentally. I know fucking unlimited people that fucking went into something, actually made the money, but they fucking hate it. And three years, at first they needed the money, but three years in, now they've got the money and now it's fucking handcuffs because they need the money because now they've started spending it. People who don't have anything, when they get money, then they start buying dumb shit. Right? <laughs> You're right. Because that's part of the whole equation of the psychology of not coming yeah. from anything and getting money. They want the money not for stability and peace of mind. They want the money for the BMW that they saw the rich people owned when they walked across the highway from the trailer park to go to the mall. And they're like, one day I'm going to have one of those. They put fucking things on a pedestal. They, their insecurities of their status is driving them. And, that's what the, and plenty of people can be successful through deep insecurity but they're not happy fucking people. Let there be no fucking confusion on this tea with Gary Vee. I'm not talking about successful entrepreneurship. I'm talking successful life, happiness. Absolutely, yep, I happiness. agree with you. It's very clear if you read or watch anything for even more than five minutes that I want people to be happy and be self-aware. Yeah. Do I believe that work ethic is a foundational piece of success? Yes, I do. Do I want anybody ever to work so much that they get depressed? Of course not. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I never think that money is the driver. And so I think, I think whether it's lazy headline reading or not doing homework, yeah, it's it's not been it's not been the most fun to get dragged yeah. into. No, my... yeah, I, I was like, oh, I found reading that. No, and there, there's so many people who are proof of the words that you say, me included. Um, so so yeah, it's like oh man, it's, it's, just, listen, there's a there's a byproduct of success. Yeah. You know, where people, you know, hustle porn is a term, leverage preneur is a term. Hmm. Leverage preneur is when you're using other people to build yourself up clicks, yeah. at the cost of the other person 
And you know, I think that though, you know, as you get bigger, people will leverage you, and I'm okay with that because the truth always wins in the end. Right. And you know, I know the body of work that I put out, my intent, um, and if you want to clip one thing or one definitive statement from one talk without the context of the whole thing, of course you can say anybody says anything. Mm -hmm. But the reality is is that, you know, I, uh, I believe work ethic is important if you want to achieve hyperbolic success. I don't want to tell people how to be happy. Yeah. So why are you telling me how I should be happy? My uh, and there's plenty of people that are super depressed that work 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just hyperbolized link baiting, leverage penoring, and I'm okay with that. But at the same token, it's important not to uh, not take other people's points of view into account. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm in a constant, you know, focus of that as well. What do you feel like you've mastered and what do you feel like you're still learning? That's a good question. Um, what am I, I'm, I'm still learning about myself. You know, in the new book, I talk about candor. I mean, it, it took me, you know, what's crazy for people watching this is Gary Vee's biggest strength is candor. Mm -hmm. But I'm not talking to anybody. I'm talking to the world. And thus, I'm not hurting Dustin's feeling or Johnny's feelings or Susan's feelings. Um, as an operator for 20 plus years, I did everything I could to fix a situation without telling somebody they stunk. Are you conflict avoidant? Yes. I'm, but what made me build big businesses was not at 12.01. Okay, got it, yeah. At 11.59 I was, yes. at 12.01 I wasn't. I would always do the thing that the business needed. You had to get, you got it done. But, but it was you so, took you. It's, it was so, and what I learned and why I wrote about it was, it was so sloppy from 10.30 p.m. Yeah, to 12.01. That's right, and the angst and the And so inertia. what would happen, it, you know, really how it started was, I was reading a Facebook group of former employees and there was enough people in there that were not loving me. And I kind of just looked, read it and looked at it and I was like, this is a problem. It's time I fix this. I know who I am. I have no ill will. I only have deep love for my employees. I don't value the money enough to be, why am I in this situation where these people don't feel great towards me and they've worked for me. It's one thing when like Johnny Pants 47 leaves mm -hmm. a comment and says, you're full of shit. Yeah, yeah. That means nothing. You're like, shut up. Yeah, in the same way that somebody says you're the goat and they don't know you, you can't go yeah, high or low correct. if you don't know somebody. But when I'm reading somebody who worked for me for 19 months and I feel like I had interactions with them and I know how I run Boehner and they're like, fuck Gary, I'm like, fuck. And when I kind of really dissected it, all of the people that were not pumped all had sloppy exits. Whether we slash I got them to quit yeah. through them subtlety. feeling it. Uh -huh. yeah, subtlety. Or they were pushed out on Thursday, I would see them in the hall and be like, Karen, keep rocking it. Yeah. And on Monday, we're like, you gotta Karen's go. Karen's gone. Yeah. And like, that was mm -hmm. a real shortcoming. And so I talk a lot about it. And I talk about how I put the word kind in front of candor and it shifted everything for me three, four years ago. I just, I just can deal with it mm -hmm. more. I can deliver it more. Um, and and I practice it more. and. And it's made substantial. I mean, mm. VaynerX's revenue business, the PL, is dramatically stronger today because its CEO got better at candor. Yeah. Yep. It trickled down. My greatest belief is that a leader's number one goal is to eliminate fear. Hence why it was hard for me to say, Sally, you know, you're really not doing well and we're gonna need to get this better. My thought was Sally leaves my office, goes and gets upset, Johnny go, Johnny leaves my office, goes and gets upset, gets scared, goes on LinkedIn and starts up thinking shit's that, all over, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I, I feel like candor leads to fear and that's how I saw it for a long time and that's wrong. But, but the reason I don't call it candor in the book and call it kind candor is what I know for a fact is over the last 25 years, I've witnessed unlimited inside of my companies or the hundreds of companies I've invested in that people use candor as an excuse to be mean. Mm. Managers and bosses use, well, I'm just helping you, but they shit all over you. Yeah. Their, their bedside manners are atrocious. And even though they're helping you, you leave you know, demotivated stunned, and, demotivated, yeah. shook, and you're out the door. And I think it's time once and for all that we talk about what it is to be a leader and build a big business. And I don't think nice guys finish last. Yeah.